Well from Summit Counseling Services. Good morning to you, Jenny. Good morning. Good. Thanks for having me. Of course. Always the happy you have you on here on a Monday because we need some right thoughts, on, I think, on a Monday. We, you know, I think, but that is a fact though. It is Monday, right? But the question is, is how, Monday. <laughs> how can that steer <laughs> ourselves? So today's thing that we're talking about, thoughts are not facts. So wherever you want to start with that. Sure. Absolutely. You know, a lot of times when we're trying to manage our depression or anxiety, our thoughts are really the gateway into accelerating those feelings or experiences. And so that's where a lot of therapy comes in to help deal with as changing our thoughts can often change how we feel. And then if we change how we feel, that changes is how we act. So that's where mindfulness can be very much a benefit and an asset to you when you're trying to manage depression or anxiety or any other type of life situation because it really brings us to that present moment. It helps us to take a distance between ourself and our interpretation because a lot of times things spiral is because when we think something and we automatically assume that's where it's going that can lead us into parts that aren't very helpful and can actually exasperate depression and anxiety so mindfulness really helps us put that separation there so we can separate and not have it escalate and oh man, isn't it true that once you think something, it's really yes. hard to let it go? And that's where we have to bring the mindfulness, kind of build that wall and bring it to something. So what do we do? How do we put this into practice? You already said mindfulness, but uh, are there right. questions we ask? Are there practices? How do we go? Yes, there's pretty much four different questions that you can ask yourself when you're really trying to check yourself of your that because thoughts are just thoughts and thoughts are very much based off of our interpretations and it could be an interpretation from just recently or an interpretation from years ago that didn't really have anything most recently happen. So one of the very first good questions to ask you is, is it true? And of course, we're going to automatically assume that it's true, but that's our mind going on autopilot, right? And if we're in a kind of uh, anxiety stance where we need to have answers, we're going to make something true, even though it's not really true. We haven't really looked at the whole scheme of both sides of it. We're just, we kind of assume so we can take a stance because once we take a stance, then we can get to action. And with anxiety, we want to take action right away. Mm -hmm, Cause we don't like those thoughts at all. They kind of just right. mess with our mind. But now theoretically, once we've answered, yes, this is true. Should we yes. re-ask that same question and make sure it's really true? We should, we should understand, is it absolutely true? So this is within that sc scheme where mindfulness and some other therapies go into what we call radical acceptance, where we are 100%, almost a thousand percent knowing that it is true and being very radical, that there is no other way to define it in any way, shape or form. And when you think about it, not many things are very absolute. You know, like even the color black, we can think that that is absolute, but there can be tons of different shades of black and some of them might call it black, some of them might call it a dark gray. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But just really looking at that, can we see it a different way? And most likely we could, and that would mean that it's not absolute then. Okay. I mean, that makes sense because some people too, maybe don't see green or red too. That's, so that's a different, absolutely true right. in its own way. Now, once we do find out that it is true though, and how we view it, or if it is fact, factual, um, how does it make us feel now? Right. You know, on that, I wish I could change how that's because nothing can really make us feel something because it's our interpretation that is creating the feeling. So I like to more say of when that happened, how did you feel? So, you know, when this situation, when that thought popped into your head, how did you feel? And mo most storylines are things that we're holding on to something from the past or something from the near recent that just happened. Like maybe you're driving to work and somebody cut you off on the way to work and maybe you're taking some of that frustration or resentment walking into work and and somebody else doesn't pay attention to you or they don't respond to you and say hi you're like oh see somebody else hates me i just must be invisible today somebody cut me off in traffic now my coworker isn't saying hi to me we're making these you know feeling invisible so recognizing those feelings that are attached to that thought can be very beneficial in stopping that spiral of depression or anxiety 
Mm -hmm. I like the idea, too, if uh, you wave to somebody in the car and you're like, how come they didn't wave back, right? Chances are pretty yeah. good they just didn't see you. But, like, again, it's right. mind and it's playing with you and stuff. So what would it be like if we didn't hold this belief of whether we felt it or we didn't? Right. Yeah. That's really trying to promote that mindfulness of really taking in the whole experience of what is actually happening and then being able to look and see alternative views. Because mm -hmm. if we get segregated like this is absolutely true this is black is black there is no other version of black right that i mean that can really put us in a rigid stance and when we're in a rigid stance that we can be unwilling and flexible to see alternatives and alternatives may lead to alternative ways of feeling so we don't feel so stuck in having to feel that way just because we're thinking that then we kind of railroad ourselves into feeling like we have to feel that and that doesn't feel good nobody likes to be told or what it's Showing that you have to feel this way. So promoting alternatives really helps you to get in a freedom of being in control of your own emotions yeah. instead of them controlling you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's all mind games, right? And that's where we always talk about it week in, week out, where mindfulness comes to play. Now, what are some other, like we talked about the four questions that you should be asking yourself, to determine how it is and how you feel and such. But is that really where, like, the four things that we should ask and we should be okay now afterwards or how would we go from there? Right. Those are a good starting point okay. to practice and become aware and be uh, increasing your self-awareness of what your thoughts are. And just because you have a thought doesn't mean you are that thought. And that's a critical aspect to separate from is not because you're thinking, oh, I hate this doesn't mean you hate yourself. But a lot of times people translate that and that can actually magnify feelings of depression, feelings of anxiety. So this is those first four questions are a good way to help increase that self-awareness, get you to understand the connection between your thoughts and your feelings, mm -hmm. and then kind of take that next stance to evaluate, is this feeling effective for me right now? Is is this really going to work and help me have a great day? Or is this going to make me be kind of on a sour note the rest of the day and not have a time to enjoy? So it gives you the opportunity to pause and take a moment. Mm -hmm. Is this what I really want to feel? Yeah. Because you can change your feelings. Just because you feel something doesn't mean you have to keep feeling it. You can change your feelings by your thoughts. And the first step of that is being aware of your thoughts and not taking them as absolute truth, that it is ingrained in stone. Mm -hmm. It can not be moved from that right so your thoughts are not facts that's basically yeah that's yeah. the fact pretty much yep. Jenny, where can we find summit counseling services absolutely you can find us on the web or facebook or you can swing by um our offices in bismarck dickinson or williston or give us a call at 701-751-0299 well i want to circle back and just say that today is monday <laughs> so good. Yes. thank you thank you jenny we appreciate always talking to you thank you so much thank you Keep it here. We have a whole lot more to come on North Dakota Today after the break.